doing? You all right? Good. I'm just going to take this out. It's a crib sheet. I'm not going to look at it. It's just fucking heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's better. Right. We're, I'm very, very pleased actually to be doing something for Mind Charity, Mental Health Charity. I have had long-term issues with mental health. Seriously, I really have. Um, long time ago, I had a, basically a massive meltdown. Uh, nervous breakdown, call it what you will. And the first time I ever had an anxiety attack uh, was over a cheese sandwich, cheese and pickle sandwich. I decided one day, wake up and make myself a cheese and pickle sandwich and everything just went to tits completely. It was bread, margarine, pickle, cheese. And everything was flying at me, one thing after another, and I couldn't cope. My eyes were basically firing out sparks. It's absolutely true, this is the way that it went. My eyes were firing up sparks. Every single thought in my brain was connecting with another thought in my brain. I could see yellow ping pong balls flying around inside my head. It was like every single thought I had connected to another thought. And I was getting thousands and thousands of visuals and screens trying to block out things which were irrelevant so I could focus on this cheese and frickin' pickle sandwich. I gave up. I gave up. I had a glass of water, went back to bed for about three days. A little while later, I decided I'd go and get some therapy. Went to the doctor, went to get some therapy. And um, one of the things, therapy is fantastic. If you go, if anyone suffers with mental health problems or what, you know, know someone, therapy is great. It's great to talk about stuff, great to have people listen. One of the things about therapy is that not every single technique works for every single person. So it's good to try a few things out. Um, my therapist at the time, I was having massive problems with going into town. I had agoraphobia, I had social phobia, I had depression, I'm bipolar, uh, and anxiety attacks and all this sort of stuff. I also have Tourette's. So if, you, if I start twitching, it looks, makes me look like a thunderbird on the end of a fucking bungee cord. That's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. So my therapist said to me, I should visualise going into Colchester shopping. And I'm standing at the sink one day having a shave because it's very manly. And I'm doing this and it's, uh, I thought, you know, and I visualised myself going into Colchester and within five minutes I thought I was having a freaking heart attack. All I could see was blood and guts and arms and legs and broken things. And it absolutely freaked me out. I collapsed on the floor. Couldn't go into Colchester. So, what I'm going to do to give you guys and girls an idea of what it actually is like to have a panic attack and have anxiety issues is I'm going to take you on a virtual shopping trip with me into Colchester. Okay. We're going to go and buy something. I'm going to show you what this is like. So, first of all, I'm going to get the bus. Any of you guys and girls bus drivers? Of course, why would a bus driver be a freaking comedy night, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Most miserable bastards on the planet. <laughs> I don't believe they start out that way. I think what happens is they go to their school careers. They go to their school careers when they're 16, and basically they say, um, you know, any, any hopes and dreams? No, not really. Any fears? Yes. I can't stand driving. I can't stand people. I can't stand dealing with money. I can't stand being in a metal box. I can't stand traffic. <coughs> Fucking awesome. Bus driver. <laughs> so there are seven stages of panic attacks, by the way. That's stage one. <laughs> Just so you know. Seven stages. <laughs> so, I decide I'm going to get on a bus. I go to the bus stop, I've got the timetable, I've got all the times written on a piece of paper several times, and I'm constantly looking at this piece of paper so much that I've worn through it and the ink's on my fingers. Now, I get on the bus, the doors aren't designed for humans, they suddenly open about this wide and not fully, so then you're trying to get on, and then they shut really quick because it's ah, trying to get. They've got a post in the middle where you're trying to get through, and then the bus driver, what you do is you say, hello, I'd like to go to, like this evening, Hurst Green. And what they do is they don't go, welcome you, welcome the customer, or victim as we're known. They welcome you onto the bus. <laughs> what they do is that thing, they just look away like that. You talk to someone, they suddenly do that. They look away like they can't see you. So you say, I'm going to go to Hurst Green, and they, go, and they start twiddling with buttons on the door on the front of the bus, just for no reason whatsoever, just to make you feel really, really insignificant and terrible. The next thing you say is, how much is it? One pound fifty. One pound fifty. Fantastic. Here's one pound. Or one pound forty-nine, sorry, for the fare. Here's one pound fifty. And what they say at that point? Sorry, I can't change that. You know, for fuck's sake. They even played contact list tonight. They said they couldn't change that either. Well, that's great. Also, being on six foot two, I think, with these shoes, about six three. So buses aren't designed for me. They're slightly too top, slightly too to hear, so you walk on the bus like this, and then you sit down, and the chairs are this far away from each other, so my knees are around my fucking neck, and there's always a person with the stickiest child in existence right behind you. <laughs> 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 you get up my fucking neck, you arsehole! So, it's about four quid I've got to put the swear to for saying the F word, anyway. <sighs> and I don't know where I'm going on bus, it's so, like, Anyway, I don't do the bus. What I decide to do is the train. If I'm going to go into Colchester Col Col now, I'll get the train. I live two minutes away from the station in Wivenhoe as well. So 
So all my clocks at home are set two minutes fast, and it's my watch. So if I ever have to get a train, my last minute panic is actually two minutes panic. Which is just enough time for me to go, ah, stage two of a panic attack, run to the station. Got enough time to buy a ticket. Of course you would if they had someone at the ticket office. Why would they? <laughs> Why would they bother just because that's a place where people go and buy a ticket? Why have someone there? Have a machine on the freaking platform with all these buttons and things. It's like, what sort of fare do you want? Do you want a day return, a single day return, a special day return? You can't use between 8 and 11, or 11 and 5 past 11, or 6 and 3. You come back on a Monday or a Wednesday. I just want to go fucking down. <laughs> and these touch sensitive screens, biting my hands are so sweaty that nothing is meant to scream. <laughs> <laughs> Octopus over the front of this freaking screen trying to get it in. You then do it, you put your card in, you put your five quid down, it's sucked in there, my fingernails have got out, cream. Three minutes later, the chain go, put in. Put in. Put in. Put in. Put in. Put in. And you've still got to wait another minute for the ticket to come out, this return, so you've got to wait another minute for the other one to come out. The train's waiting there. So that's stressful, stressful as hell. It's only eight minutes from Wivano into Colchester on the train. That's bad enough, I'll go in there, I'll find myself a seat. I always sit away from everybody else, or everyone sits away from me due to the Tourette's I mentioned earlier. No one wants to sit next to me. I'm... That's on a good day. So I'm sitting there, and regardless of where you are on a train, you'll always come across what I like to refer to as the McDonald's family. The McDonald's they're known as, because whatever bloody station they get on could be going from with to Walton and Great Bentley. There's not McDonald's. For miles and miles around, this entire family, seven generations of the bastards, turn up with every McDonald's fry ever made. They've got burgers and meat pies and freaking milkshakes, but basically chips. And what they do is they don't eat the chips, they put them on the floor and they spread them around like this. Just so their smallest child's got somewhere to skate while he's playing with the lamb's diaper. And the mum's always got the loudest ringtone in the universe. Hello, who is it? Bugger off, I'm on a train! Two minutes like, Dad! Ah! Sorry, I don't like getting on the train. <laughs> <laughs> so once I'm in town, I have to go to the shops. Oh my God, so I'm just going to go and buy something. I'm just going to go go to somewhere and buy, go to a charity shop, buy some, you know, new, old, new clothes. So... <laughs> Because you don't, you know, basically take the old ones in, pick up some new ones, you don't have to do any washing. It's good for the environment. So that's good. <laughs> but charity shops are designed in such a way that you get two old women, it's always old women, nothing sexist, it really fucking is, two old women in a charity shop will block every single path through that shop. Doesn't matter how far away the clothes are from each other, they'll just stand there, face like thunder. <laughs> You can't get through I've got agoraphobia and claustrophobia. <laughs> really difficult to find the space exactly the right freaking size, really astounding, but <laughs> Oh, God. So, I go to a charity shop and obviously, I can't buy clothes to fit. Look at it, for God's sake. They're either too long or too wide or too short or whatever. I buy shoes big enough and then I'm tripping up. So, I'll go to Sainsbury's while I'm in town. I'll go to the same as and buy some groceries because it's cheaper than the co-op in Wivenhoe, which basically is so expensive it makes Waitrose look like Poundland. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in Sainsbury's and I buy a few groceries and in there I'm, I'm not sure of the layout of the place and if I can't visualise things before and have the heart attack before I go into town, then I'm going to have it in town. <laughs> Where are the vegetables? Where's the bread? Where's the bread? Stage three. Ah! <laughs> Stage three, a panic attack. <laughs> So I get to the counter, and this doesn't apply just to people who have anxiety issues, everybody has to deal with this, and it happened to me today in the car in Wivenhoe because I was feeling flush. Before I got in there, I bought like two items, that was 43 quid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you get the person in front of you who stands there and just watches all their shopping go. <laughs> and at that point, they'll fumble around. Once they bring up the price and everything else, they've got about a dozen people waiting behind. That's when they'll start fumbling around for their wallet. Oh, where is it? Where is it? And then they'll take their money out. And they still haven't loaded all their shopping in the vehicle. Get the fuck out of my face, you bum! I'll pay for it. Here's your shopping. Fuck off! So, so I'd rather not deal with it. I'd rather go to a shop where. Oh, gee. The, what's the other, other big place? In, in, the only place you can buy electronics in Colchester, because everything's so far out of town. I can't drive anymore for obvious reasons. 
like anger man management issues. Like, <laughs> my road rage got so bad before my nervous break that I'd be driving along and actually get out my car and start shouting at other parked cars. <laughs> So I haven't driven in an awful long time. I have driven twice, but I really, really weren't my cars. <laughs> but the owners weren't aware, so it really didn't matter. You know? And I was on heavy medication, so it wouldn't really have hurt me if I didn't need it. So. That's cool. So I think I will look at that. So internet shopping. That's why I decided to do instead internet shopping. I have stuff delivered. I have stuff delivered to my home. I just go on the internet, have a few drinks, go on the internet, buy something. It's a big surprise when it turns up the next day. I've got over 30 guitars, you know, in my house now. <laughs> Every time I get drunk, I think, oh, I need a guitar. And I go on there, and two days later, something turns up. It's fantastic. And uh, so, but the thing with that is waiting for deliveries. And you've got to sit there and wait for something to be delivered. Now, the people they employ to be delivery agents aren't just drivers, they're actually freaking ninjas, silent assassins, they're absolutely silent. You ever heard anyone knock on your door? <laughs> <laughs> they're off! Down the road! Did you hear something? I live next to a restaurant. My front room literally joins onto the kitchen of a restaurant. You can imagine waiting for a delivery and every single knock and bang and little knife and fork scraping. Ah, my parcel's here! <laughs> they don't know because they send you the thing on the bloody telephone at six o'clock in the morning saying your parcel will be delivered between 7am at 11 p.m. Monday to Friday, you go, what the fuck? <laughs> you can't go to the toilet, you can't have a poo, you can't have a shower, you can't have a shave, you can't cook anything, you can't go and have a beer, you can't go shopping, just in case a person turns up and goes, and then runs away again. <laughs> <laughs> so they've decided, they've decided click and collect. Sounds lovely. Click, collect, click, collect. Where do you have to collect it from? Freaking Argos! <laughs> That's the, that's the shop where people banned from Wilkinson's are allowed to shop. <laughs> <laughs> the place is where dreams are just dis, you know, destroyed, so you know, I don't bother with that either. So, oh God, so I've been shopping, I bought, God knows what I bought, I've got a list. I've come home with a, a sorted bunch of random shit, clothes that don't fit me or anybody else, I've got to go and take them back next week. And, um, so, I like to go for a beer, chill out, go for a beer. But you can't just go for a beer anymore, because people, what people like to do, and people, oh, people refer to shopping as retail therapy. <laughs> yes, retail therapy, thank God for that. <laughs> people like to... <laughs> Stage four. <laughs> so, uh, I like to go and have a beer, but the thing is now, you can't just go shopping. You have to have a shopping experience. How is your shopping experience? Well, I just went shopping. I just bought some food. It was a shopping experience. And experience is like being thrown out of a helicopter. Being, <laughs> being swallowed by a shark, swimming with gorillas, you know. Whatever it is, I don't know what it is. That's an experience. <laughs> Setting fire to a hot air balloon while there are people inside it. That's an experience. That's great. Get, get the Polaroid. Right. <laughs> but it's a shopping experience. But they've also done this. They add words on the things which are basically quite banal and bland to make them more exciting. Another one is craft beer. Craft beer. It's not just beer, it's craft beer. I blame the frickin' hipsters. Beard culture, bloody hell, you know? Craft beer. Do you know how you make beer? Basically you get some barley, you put it in a big pan, you heat it up to 70 degrees and you leave it for about an hour. Once that's done, you filter it, you boil the shit out of it for an hour, chuck some hops in, let it cool down, put some yeast in, next day bottle it and go home. That's it. It's no more difficult than making a cup of tea. <laughs> I'm going to make myself a craft cup of tea. Are you really? You really? I'm going to I'm going to lovingly press the button on the freaking kettle, put the tea bag and tell me right the tea right, the should be. It's a fucking cup of tea. Fuck off. <laughs> I had a craft tin of soup before I came here. Mike came three minutes. Ding, 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 ding. I'm a master freaking craftsman, I am, mate. And I blame, I blame the hipsters for this, really. I mean, the hipsters are an easy target. That's why I'm attacking them, really. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything in this fight. I don't think they're being a problem. It's a safe bet. It's a safe bet. I can't do this sitting with her. I can't go home after this. I'm just asking if you see this one. But basically, beard culture. I've got nothing against beard. I saw someone here with a fine beard. There, see you, sir. You've got a fine beard over there. I assume you just grew it, yes? You just decided. Okay. There's, a, there's a beer which my brother bought me for my birthday just to wind me up called Beardo. 
<laughs> and this is what it says on the label. Cultivating the finest facial furniture is a complex task. The discerning beard wearer deserves a tipple to complement their efforts. Do you know how you grow a beard? You do nothing! <laughs> nothing! Excellent. These are beards manly. No, having a shave is fucking manly. Over the size of this pointy nose, I've got terrible eyesight, I can't see shit, my hands shake. That's dangerous, me having a shave, I'm waving this bit of metal around, razor sharp metal, half a quarter of a millimetre from my face. Because my eyesight's so bad, the only way one well, know I've finished is by the colour of the water. It's bright red. <laughs> Looks like tomato soup. I've probably got most of the fur off it. <laughs> it's craft beer. It's craft beer. It's all good stuff. So anyway, <sighs> hipsters are taking over the bloody world. It's not just craft beer. It's also these bloody restaurants. They've got these poncy cafes, deconstructed menus. You know, so heard of this deconstructed menu where you go somewhere, you ask for a cup of coffee, and basically they don't give you a cup of coffee, they give you a little tray of beans, a, sm a little hammer to smash them up with, <laughs> a little cow's tit or a walnut, a bunch of burn. Basically, it's ingredients, is what it is. It's ingredients. I go to a restaurant, I want things lovely prepared and put on a plate. What ingredients? <laughs> so I go, I'm in town. I'm having a freak out, stage six. Ah! Seven stages of a panic attack. Stage seven's coming up in a minute because all I did is I ordered the cheese and pickle sandwich. <laughs> Deconstructed bloody menu. Ah! Make it yourself. Thank you very much indeed. I'm going to go over there and calm down now. Cheers. <laughs> Third gig, and he had that long gap, so extra round of applause.